Hi everybody, it's Gina. Welcome to the Library Mouse and welcome to episode one of my new series that I'm calling Middle Grade Monday. So what is Middle Grade Monday? It is going to be a series exploring some great middle grade reads based on theme or topic. I spent 32 years as a teacher. Uh, my last 20 years, I spent teaching third and fourth grade English language arts, and I loved teaching reading. I loved using literature in my classroom to explore different topics. And it is one thing that I miss since I've gotten out of teaching. So what better way to share my love of middle grade books and everything that goes with that and middle grade authors than to do a series here on YouTube. So I'm envisioning this is a great topic for anyone who loves middle grade and loves reading it, is a teacher of middle grade, middle graders, and just is looking maybe for some new book ideas or quick summaries of books on specific themes. Uh, we'll see how it all grows. Um, if you're looking for book suggestions to buy for birthdays or Christmas for your own middle grade readers, that's what I'm envisioning this series for. So come along and we'll explore the first topic which is bullying. I chose the topic because, you know, it's back to school time. We're into October and it seems like the honeymoon was always over by this time while I was teaching and bullying reared its ugly head no matter how much we tried to stop it. And I decided to read some books that I, I would have read to my class because so often kids think they are alone in dealing with whatever they are dealing with. And so often the main characters in literature can really help them, first of all, not feel so alone, but also give them ideas on how to move forward or how to handle things that they don't know how to handle. And that's what I love about literature. Uh, every day after lunch, we would come back to the classroom and I would do read aloud. And the kids could move and sit next to a friend if they wanted. Um, they could color or draw or doodle or they could just listen. And we read for 15, 20 minutes. If I could sneak in more time, I would. But those are the books that the kids remembered. And quite often, not even quite often, all the time, they would come back from library and be like, can you please read this book to the class? Can you please read this book to the class? And I wound up having a list of book suggestions from the kids that they wanted me to read. So I decided to just start with bullying and I read some of these books and some that I'm going to mention are just some ideas that uh, I found online that have great reviews. So the first book that I read about bullying is a book called Starfish. It is by Lisa Phipps and it was published in 2021. This was a really, really good book. I liked it because it was written like in free verse and the chapters are very small, short poems. Very easy to read, very easy for uh, a read aloud. And I really liked how it was written. Um, so the book follows Ellie. She's 12 years old. She is overweight and she has struggled 
for years being overweight and being bullied by not only her classmates. This is a book that tends to differ from so many other books about bullying in that she wasn't just bullied at school. Um, she was bullied by her family members. She was bullied by her mother, uh, her siblings. They either were making fun of her or they were feeling sorry for her. And the only ally that she had really was her father. Um, so Ellie tries to make herself invisible, make herself um, unseen, and she develops her own fat girl rules. So there were all things that she did to protect herself and to kind of shrink herself and not draw attention to herself. She feels the safest in her backyard pool. And this is where the, the title comes from. In her pool, she feels weightless and she can starfish and you know how starfish like open up. Um, she feels like that she can do that. Like she can like let herself be wide open and vulnerable while she's in her backyard pool. So what I do like about this book, besides the writing style, uh, she meets a, a friend named Catalina and she starts going to therapy. Her mother has tried everything and her mother's last resort is to try to get her to have um, gastric bypass surgery at 12. And through her friendship, through her writing, because she learns that journaling is a really good tool when you're going through therapy, or a really good outlet. So she starts journaling, which is what this book is really. It's her free verse. Um, and I like that therapy was treated in a positive way. Like at first she didn't want to go, but then she realized how helpful it was. Um, it does have a very hopeful ending and it's all about friendship and acceptance and finding your own voice, standing up for yourself. Um, the only thing, and I could be very off base, I feel like there were some instances of bullying that were a little contrived. Um, I was a child who had weight. Um, my mother was always afraid I would get sick. So she liked me a little overweight. In case I got sick and lost weight, I would look normal. And granted, I grew up in a different time period in the 70s. But in this book, it seemed like every single time she went out in public, she was bullied by either others, children, or adults. Adults in the doctor's office, adults in a restaurant, some uh, adults in a store, and I don't, I don't know. There was never a time in a book that she went out in public that she wasn't teased or made fun of or had a snide remark made. Um, so I don't know if it's just driving home the point, obviously. Um, but it really, really was an excellent book. I think a lot of kids, sorry, my table keeps wobbling and so does my tripod. I think a lot of kids would feel a connection to Ellie. So that book is Starfish by Lisa Phipps. Second book I read on the subject of bullying was Fish in a Tree by Linda Mullally Hunt. It was written in 2017. So where Starfish really focused it on being bullied by the way that you look, this book focuses on being bullied for a learning disability. So this book uh, is all about Allie. She has dyslexia. It has gone undiscovered through her entire career in school. I believe she's in seventh grade right now. Nobody knows that she has a reading problem until she moves to a new school 
and her teacher is spot on. You know, he's aware of what's going on. Um, Allie tries to um, cover up her disability the opposite way of the character Ellie in Starfish, where she did not want to draw attention to herself. Allie goes the other direction and is a behavior problem because she thinks if she can cause a distraction, it will cause people to not focus on the fact that she's not reading. They'll focus on the fact that she is misbehaving. So this book has um, this great teacher who really helps her with her reading, with her confidence, um, with her uh, feeling okay with who she is and not feeling like she needs to misbehave in order to not draw attention to herself. She also comes to the realization that her brother has the same problem. Um, so the title from the book, of the book, comes from a quote that everyone is smart in different ways. And if you spent your whole life judging a fish on its ability to climb a tree, it will spend its whole life thinking it is stupid. And that is just the greatest quote. I would love to hang that in my classroom and talk about it and really do a deep dive with it uh, with my students if I was still teaching. But um, she also learns to like accept help. Like, there's nothing wrong with saying I have a problem and I need help. So it's about making friends and standing up to the people who are bullying you and trusting in people. So it was another really, really great book for bullying. Another book that was totally different was a book that I really enjoyed called Light and Air. And it is a debut novel by Mindy Nichols Wendell. It was just published this year in 2024. It takes place in, um, 19, in the 1930s. And it follows this little girl, Haley, and her mother. Her mother um, comes down with tuberculosis. And they are bullied by shunning. So it kind of reminded me of when people were first coming out and having AIDS or COVID um, when the other kids in class find out that her mother has TB. They make fun of her, they shun her, they don't play with her, they're not friends with her. And, and, I, and I think it's good for kids to see that bullying is not just about you know, your clothes are what you look like. Sometimes there's so many different reasons why kids bully each other. And I also like the fact that they could also see, wow, it's just not nowadays that this takes place. I mean, this is happening in the 1930s that it was happening. But it's a really, really sweet book. Very realistic. Like I've said before, I live in a town with a TB hospital. Well, that was one. And this is spot on. And actually, this TB hospital in this book really isn't that far from where I live either. So her family, um, her mom is sent away to the TB hospital and she's left with her father. Her father is not a kind person. He changes at the end. You can see him gradually getting better throughout the book, but he's not a very loving father. And how this little girl copes with being the woman of the house and trying to take care of things while her mother is gone to eventually being so sick, she also was sent to the TB hospital. But this is, when she goes there, that place becomes almost more of a home to her. She makes friends. She feels love. Um, she knows she's close by her mother. 
and she, she comes to terms with how her father treats her and why he treats her the way that he does. It is not a sugar-coated book. Um, there is a child who passes away from TB in the book, one of her friends. Just a trigger warning. Um, but it is a really good book of just having hope and being brave and having strength and also forgiveness, like forgiving the people who treat you badly. Um, it's short, it's not a very long book, but it's very well written. Definitely recommend um, A Light and Air. Another great book that I read is called Posted. It was written by John David Anzerson in 2017. So Posted follows this group of four boys. The main character is um, this kid named Frost. And he has a core group of four who do everything together. They sit together at lunch. They hang out with each other on the weekends. They're kind of all misfits, teased by other kids in school, but they find each other. You know, they find each other and they're perfectly happy with that. And the school decides that they are going to ban cell phones. And so the kids start communicating with each other by post-it note. And They'll write each other post-it notes and stick it on each other's locker, which is all well and good until the bullying that was happening on their cell phones at school is now transferred to some bullying on the post-it notes. So the kids are dealing with that. They're also dealing with the fact that there's a new girl in school who's used to being bullied but doesn't put up with anything. Like She just doesn't care. And she kind of infiltrates their group of four friendship group and things change. And for the main character, he's not happy with how things are changing. He's also not happy with the bullying that is going on all the time now with the post-it notes. Um, I think that this is a group, first of all, this is such a good book that really I think would um, resonate with students just because of all the social media bullying. And you don't even need social media to be a bully or to say things. And the fact that, you know, words hurt, words just, words can never hurt me, totally untrue. And that words have meaning. So you can use words in bad ways to hurt people, but you can also turn it around and use words for good. It's also a great coming of age where he, Frost, realizes that things that you think are going to stay the same forever change. And it's sad. But you kind of have to accept it. Like your your core friendship group, it's going to change as you get older, most likely. And you have to come to terms with that, which is what he does throughout the book. And he's really will not, not happy and not willing really to accept how his group of friends is changing. Um, but the, the, the themes of friendship and being brave and... Uh, being kind to each other and coming to terms with loss. Eh, just a great book. And I like the fact that the main character was a boy. So many books um, that I have researched or read all have girls as the main characters. And it was nice to find a book that I would read to my classroom that had a boy is a main character. So yes, posted by John David Anderson. Okay, so uh, another book that came highly recommended was a book called The Best At It. It is by Molly Pancholi, and it was a Stonewall Book Award winner of 2020. Also a boy main character. His name is Raul Kapoor. Uh, he's heading into seventh grade. He lives in a small town in Indiana. 
He's very, very anxious. He's starting seventh grade. Um, his grandfather, who he looks up to quite a bit, gives him some advice for starting, you know, something new, meeting new people, you know, dealing with people who are bullies. He's like, find one thing you're really good at and become the best at it. So Raul doesn't know what he's special at. And he tries throughout the book to find the thing that he's special at because he thinks if he can become good at one thing, the bullies will leave him alone, especially uh, one bully in particular who just do doesn't stop torturing him at school. Um, he, it's also a coming out book to be aware if your school has policies on that. But it also deals with that besides bullying. Um, it is He's afraid that he's going to discover that he's not good at anything. And I mean, how, I mean, there, as adults, you still think that so often. Like, am I, am I, like, am I good at anything? Like, what really am I good at? Um, and sometimes you sit and think about that. And for this kid, so many younger kids do think, like, what if I'm not good at anything? Then what? And he, he grapples with that question in the book. So it's a great book about friendship, family, um, courage to live your own truth and not be bothered by what other people think. So it is called The Best at It. So the next book is much more of a dark book. I don't know if I would I I think I'm, it's for a more mature student it is the book Wolf Hollow by Lauren Wolk it is a Newbery honor book it's won tons of awards um, it's like the best of the year book for Booklist, Entertainment Weekly, Kirkus Review, Shelf Awareness, School Library Journal, Wall Street Journal, and it's an ALA notable children's book. So the story is um, about this girl named Annabelle who lives in Wolf Hollow. It's a quiet place. It's right after World War II. Everything is wonderful in this little town until this girl named Betty moves in. And she is an extremely cruel and manipulative girl. And at first her bullying is a little isolated and then it expands and escalates and she kind of focuses on this reclusive man named Toby who's a World War I veteran. Other people in town see him as strange but Annabelle has only known kindness with him and tensions mount when uh, Betty disappears and they think Toby has something to do with it. And it's, it's a sad book and it is a dark book. It's extremely well written and it really focuses on Annabelle and she really has to, you know, analyze what, what she has come to know as what is right and what is wrong? And does she have the courage to be like the lone person to stand up for what is right? But I did see some reviewers say that it was gory. I'm not going to give too much away about what happens to Toby and Betty, but to suffice it to say, it's not a happy ending um, as far as their lives. So, I think it's a book that you would definitely need to preview before you jump into it. Um, I think it's it's just a much deeper level 
a more horrific level of bullying um, in this book. But it sounds really good. It sounds good in the in fact like literarily and like the lessons learned it sounds like it would be a good book okay last but not least is the book turtle boy it's uh definitely uh on a much lighter <laughs> note than wolf hollow this is a book by m evan wolkenstein it was a 20 21 debut novel. It was a Sydney Taylor Book Award winner. I've read only good reviews about this book. So the main character is a book name or a book, <laughs> a boy named Will, and his bar mitzvah is coming up. And for his community project, he is supposed to go and hang out at this uh, hospital to visit this boy named RJ who has an incurable disease. And, you know, Will is an introvert. He'd prefer to be at home with turtles that he collects, hence the title of the book, Turtle Boy. He has a fear of hospitals. So he's facing that. He's really outside of his comfort zone visiting this boy he doesn't know. And they don't get along with each other at first. And eventually, RJ shares the fact that he has a bucket list. Now, Will, besides being an interview, introvert, is also really relentlessly teased at school for the way he, that he looks. So part of his introversion, I think, is the fact that he has suffered through a lot of bullying. But through RJ, as RJ progressively gets worse, Will decides that he's going to tackle RJ's bucket list himself. And as he does each of the things on RJ's bucket list, he pulls him out of his own comfort zone too. And he becomes just a more confident um, person. And he realizes like how precious life is and that you shouldn't do it in a shell. You know, you need to go out and you need to have experiences. And it just makes him just an all around more confident person. And I like the fact that, I mean, there is bullying involved, but they're also talking about, you know, friendship and being willing to try new things when you really don't want to or when you're afraid to and you have to face your fears, which are all great topics for children to talk about. So last but not least, we have uh, Turtle Boy by M. Evan Walkenstein. Check it out. So there you have it. Some great middle grade books for you to explore, to read, to go ahead and look through maybe one of them or more sounds like it would be an interesting read or a good book to give to a middle grade reader um, if you have any suggestions for themes or the kind of middle grade books that you'd like me to uh, explore and research and talk about next time just drop them in the comments below and I will see you on my next video. Happy reading.